Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our 50 plus camera install at a school. This project is done, so we're gonna show you everything we've done from the dressing in the racks, to the cleanup, to the new APCs, to the fiber, to the switching, to everything. But if you haven't checked out part one, go ahead and give this video a pause and, and watch that video. It's about 15 minutes or so. You don't wanna miss it, but without further ado, let's dive right into it. All right guys, before we go upstairs and show you the server rooms, which look amazing now, I want to kind of talk about how we chose which cameras go where and our philosophy for doing that. So obviously Unify is coming out with all kinds of new cameras all the time, not to mention other vendors out there. So, you know, how do we choose what goes where? Now, the first thing is, let's talk about indoor cameras. Inside, we're pretty much always doing flex cameras, especially for spaces like classrooms, hallways, uh, there, there are exceptions to this, of course, especially in like the gymnasium. We ended up putting in 4Ks because it's such a large space. We need to be able to cover that area and we can either put more cameras in or we can put, uh, you know, fewer cameras that are higher resolution. And this is kind of one of the myths about security cameras is resolution really isn't for quality. I mean, it is, but we do resolution to get coverage because the more resolution we have, the fewer cameras we need to adequately cover a space. Now, outdoors, we went with several cameras. We went with domes primarily above the doors and ways of entry. We had bullets uh, and the two varieties is the G4s and the G4 uh, Pros, which are the, the 4K variant. And we chose those cameras really depending on the area we're trying to cover. If we're covering a field, uh, which is pretty large, we de decided to deploy 4Ks versus if we're covering a hallway that's pretty short, like an outside hallway, we went with uh, G4 bullets, just the regular non-Pro version. So. And this is something to think about when you, when you choose cameras is you know, every camera has its purpose. It's not just, you know, more expensive is better because there are certainly applications where you wouldn't want to, for example, put a G4 Pro on a drop ceiling tile. It just is going to be really heavy and it may fall. But you know, with, with uh, you know, choosing those cameras correctly, it really can make a big difference when you need to achieve adequate coverage. What's up, guys? So we are back here inside of the MDF and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how this came to be, it looks a little different than part one. As you guys know, we kind of cleaned everything up. So we're going to start from the ground up. Um, you guys will see that we have the cable kind of running up through the back with the ladder rack. It looks really nice. It was punched down into the new Unify uh, patch panels, which look super clean with all the Unify equipment. And then for the uh, patch cables themselves, we use the vertical cable slimline patch cables. And we got them, of course, in unified uh, IT blue to fix them they're uh, they're six inches so that way they um, they actually kind of curve out very nicely you can see in some of the b-roll shots that they look very neat and uh, patched together so from the beginning we'll start at the ISP level they're actually using a sonic wall here which is kind of what the MSP wants to keep using which isn't a problem that's their preference so we will leave it like that and that's something they manage uh, but once we get past that, we go into our aggregation switch and we kind of go into the Unify equipment. So we have our aggregation switch at the top and then we have that LACP'd down into some of our leaf switches that kind of provide the access level to some of the computers around the campus, some of the WAPs, and some of the other things that are connected back here. So for that, we have these two Unify 48 port um, PoE switches that handle most of the access level and then back at the top to the aggregation switch goes out to the library and back towards the other IDF and at those sides are similar switches they're the 48 port PoE Unify switches as well. There's actually two strands of fiber going to each of those. Now each of those has an incoming strand that goes into the top of that rack then kind of goes from switch to switch and then one of those strands actually comes back to create a ring. So there's actually a ring from here to the library and a ring from here to the other IDF. Now those actually use the um, spanning tree protocol, which you can kind of set up in Ubiquity. We'll probably throw a screenshot up there for you guys to check it out. But actually one of those ports is actively blocking itself because we know if we were to just plug the network into itself in a ring, it would actually brick itself and break. So that's why we have that um, RSTP or STP protocol to actually prevent that and then it will detect, oh, hey, this link is down. I can actually unblock that port to bring the other half of that ring up. Now it's kind of a mix right now with some Meraki access points and 
unify access points, but they're slowly running into a new project that will actually be switching over all of the WAPs from the mixture to full unify. So they'll be unified for the switching and the access points, but the routing will still be handled by that sonic wall. Uh, we did retrofit all of the locations, the library, the IDF here with new APC units. The APCs aren't the end all be all for us. They're actually really just a means to kind of keep the network alive until you know some sort of infrastructure that is kind of big like this can actually transition into secondary power. But um, we checked the loads on these and these can actually run for an hour and a half almost completely you know, normally. So they can kind of almost act as secondary power with how little we're throwing at these big units. But um, in standard practice, usually the UPSs are only a means to keep stuff alive so you can save what you're doing, make sure everything's good or to switch over to a secondary source of power like a generator or something like that. So we had some questions in part one about how do we actually mount these cameras and we start with these metal boxes. We can use plastic in some cases too, but the important thing is to choose a box that doesn't have any gaps in it for water to get through. These boxes are great because they're really resistant uh, to water getting in and you can get these cover plates for them. We actually got PVC plates that have a weather seal around them so it's very difficult for water to get in once you close that box up. We then will go ahead and mount the camera and we use, uh, we'll cut three holes. So we'll take the, the plate, we'll put it into a vice grip and, and then we will drill a hole for the Cat6 cable and two for the fastener. So between that and the O-ring that comes with the camera, it's really hard for water to get in. And this spot actually was hit uh, directly by Hurricane Ian and we lost no outdoor cameras. I say outdoor cameras because we did lose an indoor camera to a roof lake, but hey, that doesn't count, right? No one's expecting that. So. Um, it's a really good system. We think it works uh, fairly well, especially for areas that you can't mount to a building easily or you, where you can, it's just concrete. And there's not a great spot to get cables into. So hope this helps you guys as far as installing these cameras. I know when I got started doing Unify uh, cameras, just cameras in general, you know, I'm more of a technical guy. So learning some of the more mechanical things was a challenge to me. And uh, uh, we came a long way before we discovered uh, kind of this, this methodology. So what do you guys use? Those of you that install them, I'm curious. So write us down below. Well, hey guys, thank you for making it to the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed this content. If you could do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps the algorithm know that you enjoyed this video and it'll help get it out to more people. We would show you guys inside of the controllers, but we basically would have to blur pretty much everything on screen as we do have to maintain client confidentiality. But this project was an absolute blast. Not only were we able to make this campus more safe and secure for the students who attend here, but we were able to build a foundation at the network layer that's gonna last them you know, beyond a decade in, in, in some of those key areas. And when we do a project like this, that's really what we're doing is we are laying foundation you know, with structured cabling, with switching, uh, with rack design that's gonna go for years and years. And so it's been an absolute blast. We we're really uh, tremendously excited to get a partner with this school. And with that said, if you guys need network consulting or phones or really anything telecommunications or IT, we'd love to partner with you. You can visit our website at unifiedit.tech and we also have a referral program. If you know someone who needs technical consulting, you can go to unifiedit.tech slash referral and you'll get a little bit of commission off of that. Well, hope you guys enjoyed and we will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.